Suicide crisis hotlines have reported an increase of interventions at a growing rate of 1,000%. And in this video, I'm gonna teach parents three things they can do to ensure their child will be emotionally strong enough to survive this terrible season of social isolation. My name is Brooks Gibbs. I'm a school psychologist and sociologist. I've been working in the field of social and emotional learning for 20 years. And this week, I posted a video that received over 400,000 shares, amassing more than 15 million views. It was of a father by the name of Brad. Maybe you've seen it. It's day two since I buried my son. Brad Hunstable is a dad who recorded a video of himself describing the events that led up to his son's suicide. My son died from the coronavirus, as I mentioned, but not in the way you think. Human condition is not to be socially isolated. This video is obviously heartbreaking to watch, and I agree with Brad. Kids today deserve to have all the tools they need to survive the increasing challenges of life. We as a society, me as a parent, us as parents haven't necessarily given them all the tools to, to properly handle. And in that moment, um, probably not understanding the, the finality of the situation when the closet and got himself in a situation I believe he couldn't get out of. The, the Vanders Foundation and this new program we have is targeted towards social and emotional development of, of K through 12 and something I'm very, I was already very passionate about. Evander is very passionate about. Evander Holyfield, the guy Brad mentions, is the famous four-time heavyweight champion boxer. I spoke directly with Evander and I asked him why he cares so much about helping kids learn social and emotional skills. I, I truly believe I never would have been who I am if I didn't have help. You know, I, you know, because everything wasn't going right my entire life. Have you ever felt like ending your life or have you ever gotten so low you've despaired and can relate to that feeling? When I got hepatitis, I was, I was so sick I, and, and I just told God, I said, I know death got to be better than this. When I said that, you know, because I was sick, I was throwing up and everything. I never, ever would have thought that I ever would have said that. When I woke up in the morning, I realized that, oh, Lord, thank you for not giving me what I was asking for. Evander experienced what many of us have experienced, the feeling of hitting rock bottom. And sometimes the pain is so intense that the thought of death becomes irresistibly attractive. In a moment of despair, people willfully choose death just to escape the pain that they feel inside. So the question so many parents have been asking me is what do I need to teach my child so that they will survive those moments of despair? Well, I have three skills I believe every parent needs to teach their child. Skill number one, the golden rule. Do not look over this skill. It's literally the foundation of all other social and emotional skills, and it helps a child learn to think beyond themselves. This is exactly what Evander believes and lives by. The ultimate thing that allowed me to be a, a, a good person, my mama said, don't do nothing to nobody you don't want them to do to me. So my mama knew that I was real close to her and all this and stuff, and I, she said, okay, you love me then don't do nothing to nobody you don't want them to do to me. Whatever you do to, do to somebody, you think that somebody doing this to me. I'm telling you, it, it's kind of shaped, shaped boundaries and stuff like this. When you when you really understand what love really is, don't do nothing to you, you don't want to be done to you, but to your parents, your kids, these people that you love. And that's why we need to teach the fundamental golden rule to every child, especially those who have suicidal ideation because it gets them out of their own skin. And they say, gosh, if I was a parent, would I want my son to kill themselves? No. Right. This exactly. side is the most selfish decision anyone can ever make because they're only thinking about ending their own pain. But when we introduce the golden rule, the gift that your mother gave you, it takes you outside of your own self and consider how it impacts other people. Skill number two, emotional regulation. All of us can experience a range of emotions uh, the ability to change from mad to sad to met to glad is called emotional regulation. To do this effectively, there are three questions every parent can ask their child to help them move across the spectrum of emotions. 
Here's an example. One of the kids I recently worked with, his name is Quaden. He became super famous after his mom played a clip of him in the middle of a despairing suicidal moment. This is the effect that Give bullying me a has. I'm gonna do it though. This is what bullying does. No. And I want people to know no. how much no. it is hurting us as a family. I want people to educate their children. Now, I worked directly with Quaden after seeing this video, and I saw a dramatic turnaround after he learned to regulate his emotions. The way you teach a child to regulate their emotions is to simply teach them how to rethink their problem. You can use three key questions. Watch how I do this with Quaden. Are you okay being your size? Well, well kind of. I don't really care, but I wish I was a bit taller. How could your condition have been worse? Now, if I remember correctly, one of your surgeries, if it would have gone wrong, you wouldn't have use of your legs, right? You would have been kind of paralyzed, right? Yeah. But they did a pretty good job with that surgery, so you were able to run around. And walk. And walk. Are you thankful for your ability to run and walk? Yeah. Me too. That's kind of one of the things that we have to focus on. You know what? I'm, I would like to be taller, but it could be worse. At least I can walk. At least I can run. I'm thankful for the movement and for the great doctors that have helped me and my mom who's advocated for me. When we focus on the things you know, that, that we're blessed with, we feel less bad about it. Here's question number two. Why won't being this size bother you forever. Do you think it's going to bother you forever? I should ask it that way. Um, well, I wish I could stay a kid and not grow up and be a grown up. I wonder if being small will help you stay youthful and young. Do you think that'll, that'll help you as you get older? Being smaller will help you feel young? Yeah. Yeah. So here's my third question. How could this small stature of yours, the fact that you have dwarfism, how could this turn out for your good? How could this be beneficial for you? Well, the good thing is that I can like still run around and play sports and dress myself, turn on the shower, and wash my body and do my hair. Yes, that is good. Now, doesn't this make you unique? You are an <laughs> Aboriginal and you have dwarfism. Doesn't that make you one of the most unique people on the entire planet? Doesn't that make you special? Yeah. Skill number three, killing the ants before they kill you. ANTS is an acronym for Automatic Negative Thoughts. They are known by the mental health professionals as cognitive distortions. And I cannot overstate how deadly these ants are in the home. In fact, there are only three deadly things that I do not allow in my house. Number one, drugs, because they can kill you. Number two, weapons, because they can kill you. And number three, ANTS, or Automatic Negative Thoughts, because they can kill you. There are five ants or automatic negative thoughts that every parent needs to watch out for and have zero tolerance for allowing it in their home. Number one, mind reading. The kid might say, I know what they're going to say. I know that I just know what they're thinking. I, I, I know what they're going to say about me to someone else. No, you don't. You don't know. Yes, I do. I saw the way that they looked at me. I know exactly what they're thinking. No, you don't. Stop. I always tell kids, stop pretending you can read minds. It creates unnecessary drama that doesn't need to be there. You need to ask them what they are thinking or give them the benefit of the doubt that they are thinking good things and perhaps they're not even thinking about you at all. You are not a mind reader, so stop trying to read minds. You're just gonna make yourself crazy predicting what people are thinking. Number two, fortune telling. The kid might say, I know what's going to happen. They're going to hate me. They're going to kill me. I'm not going to make the team. I just know I'm going to fail the test. You got to tell kids, no, you don't. You don't know the future. Stop acting like you know the future. Trying to predict the future is a never ending attempt 
to discover hypothetical possibilities that will literally tie you up into a neurological tangle of insanity. Let whatever happens, happen. And learn to make decisions when you can gather all the information that you can. We gotta learn to go with the flow and start believing that even if something bad does happen, it can actually turn out for our good. You see, the future is good, not bad. Number three, catastrophizing. The kid might say, this was the biggest mistake of my life. I'm finished, I'm ruined. Now, you gotta tell a kid, no, you're not ruined. You may have made a mistake, but it's not the end of the world. In fact, you could learn from this and it might turn out for your good. Stop believing the worst, stop catastrophizing. Even if the worst did happen, you'll discover a couple things. It's not that bad. And you're actually stronger than you think. And your problems are not as bad as you think. And life has a way of positioning you for a beautiful rebound. As Evander Holyfield often says, a setback is just a setup for a comeback. Number four, overgeneralization. The kid might say, you never get in trouble. I always get in trouble. I can never do anything right. You gotta tell that kid, stop saying such absolute statements because they're lies. You sometimes get in trouble and you sometimes don't get in trouble. Stop lying to yourself when you overgeneralize using words like never and always. You have to live in truth because the truth is the very thing that can set you free from your emotional despair. Number five, labeling. The kid might say, I'm an awful person and I deserve punishment. Those people are pure evil, I hate them. That school is racist. Look, you gotta tell that kid, stop labeling people and especially stop labeling yourself. You are more than your mistakes. You're not defined, nor are you globally rated by your flaws. And if you're gonna speak about yourself or others, keep in mind the good parts. It was Martin Luther King Jr. who said, there is enough good in the worst of us. And when we focus on it, we will be less likely to hate our enemies. So those are the three social and emotional skills parents can teach their children in order to vo avoid these feelings of despair that often lead to suicidal ideation. Number one, the golden rule. Number two, emotional regulation. And number three, killing the ants before they kill you. Those automatic negative thoughts can bring you to your grave. So have zero tolerance for negative thinking patterns in the home and cross-examine your child's logic when you hear them believing lies. Do not let them get away with believing lies. It will save their life when they live in truth. Thanks for watching. Please share this video. And if you wanna learn more about parenting emotionally resilient kids, visit my website, raisethemstrong.com.